Hey there, in this video we will be talking about quantum numbers and discussing what the different quantum numbers are, what they represent, um, and how we use them to identify electrons, to identify orbitals, and later on to identify um, elements based on quantum numbers and, and electrons and orbitals. So uh, let's get started. This first question is a pretty general one. Uh, for the four types of quantum numbers, give the name of the quantum number, its letter, symbol, the range of possible values, and explain in one three sentences what property is related to each quantum number. So I left some space here, but I realized it's not going to be enough. So we're just going to jump over here, and I'm just going to go through and draw a chart of all the quantum numbers, and how they relate to each other, and what they represent. So the first quantum number is n, and this is called the principal quantum number. Um, but more commonly we call it a shell, or we call it the energy level. Um, and what are the possible values I'm charge on here? What are the possible values for n? Well, this is the same n that we were using over in the Bohr model when we were doing electron transitions. And so n is just any positive integer. can be n. Brings us to the next quantum number, which is L. And L is the um, angular momentum quantum number, uh, but usually we refer to it as a uh, subshell or a um, or the shape. So essentially, what L is going to tell us is for any given n level. What are the different shapes or different types of orbitals that exist in that n level? And the possible values for L are anywhere from 0 up to n minus 1. So when n is 1, L could be 0 up to 1 minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, which means L can just be 0. When n is 2, L could be 0 or 1. When it's 3, 0, 1, or 2. And when it's 4, 0, 1, 2, or 3. Okay, so those are all possible values. So I can actually go like this and divide this up a little bit better. It's a little bit easier to read. Okay. Now let's talk about what these um, quantum numbers 0, 1, 2, 3 represent. Uh, so they tell us the number of angular or planar nodes in our orbitals. So if I have an orbital with zero angular nodes, that's just going to look like this. Okay, and so and that's what we call an s orbital. So this is referring to an s orbital, it's an s orbital, that's an s orbital, that's an s orbital. But when I then if I were to come in and add a planar node, essentially what that planar node is saying is Along that line, I can't have any electron density. Well, what does that do to my orbital? It makes it look more like that. Okay, I took that sphere and I put a planar node right through it. Okay, and we usually just draw them like this, but that's referred to as a p orbital. So this is an s orbital. This is a p orbital. And so with one planar node, these represent p orbitals. If I were then to take and draw another planar node, so I had two planar nodes, we'd end up getting something that looked like um, um, like that. We've got two planar nodes. Looks like a four-leaf clover. We call that a d orbital. And so in n equals 3, you've got a d orbital. And in n equals 4, you've got a d orbital. And then if you have 3, I'm not going to try and draw it, but it's called an f orbital. So you can see here, in the energy level n equals 1, there's only one type of orbital that exists, that's s. But once n equals 2, you have two types, an s and p. So there's a 1s orbital, a 2s, a 2p, a 3s, a 3p, a 3d, a 4s, a 4p, a 4d, and a 4f orbitals. All those exist. That brings us to our next quantum number. I'm actually going to move this over. The next quantum number is m m sub l. 
M sabel is called the uh, magnetic quantum number. Uh, and we would usually call it the orientation or the actual orbital. So whereas L told us the types of orbitals, the shapes of orbitals that can exist, M sub L tells us um, the actual orbital that exists. And the reason we need it is because some like types of orbitals come in groups of more than one orbital. So I'll explain what I mean there. M sub L, the possible values are negative L up to positive L. So if L is 0, M sub L is just 0. But if L is 1, M sub L could be negative 1, 0, 1. If it's 2, you got negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. There you go. Now these numbers themselves don't really represent anything, but they refer to a, a single one of those orbitals. So, for example, there is only one type, sorry, there's only one orientation of a 2s orbital. There's only one of them. It's just a sphere. If you were to spin it around, it's the same sphere. But 2p orbitals, there are three different 2p orbitals. Those ones are pretty easy. You've got a px that's that way, you've got a py that's that way, and then you've got a pz that's like into the board. Okay, so when we say 2p, we're actually referring to three different orbitals, and if we want to describe the actual orbital we're talking about, or the orientation we're talking about, we need to also get an m sub l. So if you want to describe an orbital, you need three quantum numbers, n, l, and m sub l. Alright, so that brings us to our just move this over. Our last quantum number, which is m sub s, which is the uh, elect. This is the spin quantum number. I usually just say it's the electron. General rule is any orbital can hold two electrons, and so for each orbital, one of the electrons is designated as minus one half, and one is designated as plus one half. In general, we say the electrons spin opposite ways, and so um, we just need a way of identifying them. So this is a table breaking down quantum numbers. This n can keep going higher and higher, and so the l would keep going higher and higher. After we get to f, we just proceed alphabetically. Um, but let's try and answer some questions using this information. So what are the possible values of the quantum number l? when n equals 4. Well, we know that if n equals 4, l equals 0 up to n minus 1. So that means l could be 0, 1, 2, or 3. And then when l is 2, what are the possible values for m sub l? Well, m sub l equals negative l up to positive l. So if l is 2, m sub l could equal negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, or 2. Which of the following sets of quantum numbers, n, l, m sub l, or m sub s, are actually possible? Oh, this should be brought down. So you've got 3, 2, negative 2, 1 half. Well, I could just jump over here and say 3, sorry, 3 is possible, 2 is possible, negative 2 is possible, and uh, 1 half. 3, 2, negative 2, 1 half, that is possible. Okay, then I can look at this next one. 1, 1, 0, 1 half. 1, could I have 1 as L though? No, because if N equals 1, L can only go up to N minus 1. So this is not possible. 1, 0, 1, negative 1 half. 1, 0, that's fine. But then if L is equal to 0, M sub L can only be 0. So it can't be 1, so that's wrong. 0, 0, 0, 1 half, that's not possible because n has to be a positive integer, so this is not possible. And then e, 2, 0, 3, negative 1 half. If I had 2, 0, but then there's nowhere that I could have 3. And as a result, that's wrong. So a is the only correct answer here. State which quantum number is associated with the notion of shell, subshell, or specific orbital. Can I talk about that? n tells you the shell, 
L tells you the subshell, and M sub L tells you a specific orbital. Um, and then what tells you a uh, particular electron? I'll just add that here. Electron is given as M sub S, the spin. B, what value of L corresponds to letters S, P, D, and F? Why do you use letters to denote the values of angular momentum quantum number L? All right, so S is when L is 0, P is when L is 1, D is when L is 2, F is when L is 3. You can see that up here, S0, P1, D2, F3. Why do we use letters um, instead of just saying, why do we say the 1s orbital instead of the 1, 0 orbital? The real reason is just because um, a lot of numbers can be confusing, I think, and so that's why they use the letters uh, for the L. Okay. Let's see. See what kind of what type of orbital is designated by n equals four, l equals two, m sub l equals zero, m sub s equals one f. So we're talking about type of orbital. That's kind of like here. I said one s. That's when you n and l. So what type of orbital? Four l. Well, when n is four, it's gonna be four. When l is two, what type of orbital is that? That's a d. So we're talking about four d in this problem. Hopefully that's straightforward enough. Now for five, if the n equals five shell, how many subshells are there? Okay, so if n equals five, L can equal zero up to n minus one, which means I could have zero, one, two, three, and four. So that's five subshells. And you'll notice that's, that's consistent, right? If I go up here, when n equals one, I have one subshell, n equals two, I have two, n equals three, I have three, n equals four, I have four. So when n equals five, I'll have five. How many orbitals are in each subshell? All right, zero, uh, zero would have how many orbitals? Well, a number of orbitals is given by m sub l, which would be negative l up to positive l. So if it's zero, it's gonna be one. If it's one, it's gonna be one, two, three. If it's two, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're just increasing odd numbers. So if it's zero, we're gonna have one orbital. One's gonna have three. Two's gonna have five, three's gonna have seven, and four's gonna have nine. And I could also say, instead of zero, I could say S, I'm gonna put those instead, P, D, F, and next is technical, call, technically called G. How many total orbitals? I could count these up, and I get 25. That's just 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9. And you'll also know, note that in a given shell, like the n equals 5 shell, the total number of orbitals in that shell is equal to n squared. In this case, 25. All right, and the last question here, which subshell corresponds to each of the following sets of quantum numbers? Um, 2, 1, that's going to be 2p. 5, 3 is 5 uh, spdf. This would be 3d, 4f. Okay, L is what's telling me the letter, and N is just telling me the energy level, N. All right, so that's it for this uh, problem set about quantum numbers. Um, really, the biggest takeaway is knowing how you could generate this chart on your own so that you know which quantum number combinations are possible, therefore how many orbitals exist in a given shell or subshell, how many electrons could be in a given shell or subshell, um, that type of thing. And then, of course, knowing what each of the quantum numbers represents. And there you have it.